Good morning guys. Today we're going to change out a load bearing post and modify the foundation. Well just about all of the sono tubes in this house were done well with a nice gap between the bottom of the wood post and the top of the dirt. But when I discovered this post that was buried straight in the dirt I decided to dig down and investigate how deep the sono tube really was dug. And what I'm seeing here is that the sono tube is about oh, easily 8 or 10 inches below the top of the dirt. Now in terms of a plan, we need to take the weight off this post uh, as a first effort to um, allow us to take it out and we need to support that while we're re-pouring the concrete. This post is supporting the um, upper floor deck but it's not supporting a whole lot of weight and in fact with it being rotted out I wouldn't be surprised if most of the weight is now taken off of it. There hasn't been any visible slumping but clearly um, it needs to go. So here we are at the top of the post and you can see it's supporting this beam going all the way along here which supports the upper floor deck but the deck in this area isn't all that wide it's only about four feet wide and it's well supported on the low bearing wall. Um, in addition we've got some connection back here with these longer posts, these longer joists that go all the way across. And So I'm going to tie things together first off uh, so it's less likely to slump when I um, take the weight off. Now it may seem like the most logical thing is to jack from here but my base directly underneath isn't particularly stable and I don't want to come at this from an angle in case it twists and so I'm going to um, put my jack right underneath this, these beams here and hold the whole floor up. Um, in preparation for that I've thrown some big long nails into this longer cross member joist that goes all the way across and that should hopefully hold it well and, and to prevent the beam from falling down when I take the jack out I've got some hurricane clips on both sides to hold the beam up. Now before we get started I put a level on the post and it's pretty level except for the uh, this side left and right and so I'm going to use a plumb bob to put an exact center for my uh, centering of the concrete pad. Okay so we've got a big 6x6 six six beam here supporting all of the weight and distributing it on the concrete and then we've used a mechanics floor jack to jack up the floor a little bit and then we've got the main brace right here and uh, you notice that I'm a bit of ways away from my main post that I'm going to remove and I've done that for two reasons the first is that I want most of the weight to be on a well supported area underneath the concrete because I don't want the concrete breaking and then secondly I don't want anything in the way for practical reasons when I'm pouring the concrete. Now looking up top I've used 4x4s four all the way along and you can see that's smaller stock than the post that I'm removing but I think I can get away with that without complication because I've got so many other supporting structures in place now. Now coming down here if you look at the base now that the weight is taken off watch what happens when I move the post. You see that? It's pretty easy to see why this post wasn't supporting any weight. The carpenter ants had completely destroyed this of any sort of structural integrity. And now that all the moisture is gone, I've opened it up to air. The carpenter ants move on to cleaner pickings. Well, I have some old half inch uh, plywood that I'm going to use up here. I would have preferred three quarter, but this is available. It's a bit dirty and so I'm using this skill saw because I don't want to wreck any of my other blades. I've used a wire wheel to get the superficial rust off this device and to clean up the concrete to give myself the best chance that this will adhere. Alright, I've got it done now. Um, I tied it uh, to the ground with some rebar uh, into some screws so it doesn't lift up when the concrete is poured and uh, the, the angles were a bit tricky underneath and so I'm going to have to fill that in a bit more with gravel so there isn't as much spillover but I don't think that'll be a significant problem. Um, this comes off and then looking inside you can see I've got some wire ties in here to the base and then a couple of wire tires ties holding the uh, insides uh, tight so it doesn't uh, splay out when, I, when the weight of the concrete comes inside. Um, in addition I've got some rebar and some additional wire mesh so that uh, I can add in and as the concrete is poured. 
Now, there are three ways you can uh, deal with this concrete. Um, the first and easiest way is to hire a contractor to bring it for you, but they never do the small volume jobs, and in any case, we're too far away from the road to make that a reasonable prospect. The second possibility is to rent or buy a uh, cement mixer. And in fact, my brother has a cement mixer, but he tells me that his ex-wife is busy making him a new pair of shoes with it, so it's unavailable. And then the third possibility is making it in a wheelbarrow. This is a, roughly the consistency you want. Too much water, and it leaks through the forms, and too little, you get castellation in air pockets. This is the concrete that I'm using here, just a general contractor's concrete.